there's really only one place to go, in my opinion, and that's gold. You can see this is gold during all the recessions since the 1960s. It's risen every time but twice, and the two declines were single digits. And again, this is during the recession. The gold price is actually rising when there's an economic contraction. Hi everyone, welcome to this video, and I want to let everybody know that I've got Mr. Jeff back with me. Jeff, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Mr. Mike. Uh, it's great to be back with you in a video. I always enjoy these, and uh, I have some interesting info um, for you today that that uh, you might find <clears throat> kind of compelling for gold, but we'll see. Okay, well, uh, why don't you show me? So what I okay. have is a, just a real short slide presentation and it's basically uh, about recessions and economic expansions you'll see and it's about what we can learn from them so uh let me share the first one here which might be uh very interesting you'll see it's the duration of all economic economic expansions and recessions since the 1970s uh the recessions are in red the economic expansions are in green and we're measuring how long they were in terms of months. So you can see the current one there at the top, it started in May of 2020, the economic expansion, and it's gone for 42 months. This is through um, uh, the current month, uh, Mike, uh, of October. So it's assuming uh, a recession hasn't started here in October. And you'll see the, um, the recession before that, uh, that was only two months, that was the, the COVID period. Uh, mm -hmm. Technically, based on how the government measures recessions, uh, it was only two months long. But you can see these all- The itself this is very interesting because uh, yes. businesses were closed for many more months than just two. Uh, you know, we were having an extreme lockdown. I can't see how it is within the realm of possibility that uh, that recession was only two months. Uh, yeah. Because uh, so much retail business did not exist for like six months or a year. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's a good point. And actually, that's a very good point for this next chart that I'm going to show you. Look at this, Mike. This is economic expansions and recessions going all the way back to the 1800s. And yeah, I've presented this chart many, many times, but this is updated as of today. But I've been presenting this for more than 10 years. But um, can I just comment on some things on here? Yeah, the first thing I was going to point out, though, is what your okay. point earlier. You were saying that, you know, how is it, was it only two months long? Um, and I think they've changed how they measure, uh, you know, economic expansions versus recessions. Uh, they've changed how they formulate it, just like they've changed the CPI many, many times. But uh -huh. look at the left side of the chart, Mike, how much uh, bigger the red recessions are versus the right side of the chart, how little yeah. they are and how big the economic expansions are. And there's probably and most, many reasons. Oh, yeah. Most people right. would take that as very good news. That, uh, right. You know, we're mostly economic extensions, very little contractions, very little recessions. However, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the period before the Great Depression, um, you have a balance where the um, expansions and contractions pretty much net out to zero. And that's because that, that meant that there was no inflation. We had inflation, deflation, uh. inflation, deflation. And so the uh, recessions, that tallest one there, that's 65 months, uh, that one uh, is uh, called the Long Depression uh, of 1873 is when that started. Mm -hmm. So that's the Long Depression. Um, and then uh, the second highest red candle in there is the first portion of the Great Depression, interrupted by a short expansion uh, and well, a 50 month expansion from the bottom of the crash in uh, uh, 1933, we began an expansion. And then you've got the Roosevelt recession, 
which was all, all of that was in the Great Depression, even that expansion. You still had very, very high unemployment. But what I see that's very striking, the last chart was all pretty much during the uh, US dollar standard. We had disconnected from gold in 71. So if you look at this chart from, the, the, from 1970 yeah. on, that's being disconnected from gold. Uh, but, you know, we, the Federal Reserve uh, was formed, it, it was the act was passed in, I believe it was December of, uh, of 1913, but they didn't open their doors for business until November of 1914. And then they did this enormous expansion of the currency supply for World War I. And so if you look at that uh, 1915 expansion of 44 months, that, um, you know, from the beginning of the chart, that's the second highest candle on here. It's a manipulation. And mm. then uh, you have the uh, end of the war in 1918 and a little short expansion in 1919. And then uh, as soldiers come home and as we stop the currency, there was a big contraction, uh, the greatest deflation in wholesale prices in U.S. history, the Depression of 1921. Uh, so when that, um, uh, in, in 2020, February of 2020 to August of 2021, so the latter, the first half, the last half of 2020 and the first half of 2021 was actually a depression, but they did not, um, the Federal Reserve did intervene and the government didn't come to the rescue and the free market uh, rescued. The free market was what got us out of it. And then you look at the uh, crash of 29 and the 43 month candle there. And then you've got the expansion but that of, of 50 months following that. But that's, we still had very, very high unemployment. We had bank runs. This, what, that expansion took place during the Great Depression. So even though it shows as a green candle, that green candle was the Great Depression, along with the red candles on both sides. And then uh, you've got uh, 38 and uh, going to the end of the war. And so um, as we uh, exited the, uh, the um, Roosevelt recession, 1937, early 38, uh, once we exited that, we were still in the Great Depression. The Great Depression really didn't end until we were actually in the war. Uh, and then what you see is all of the red candles are very small. The green candles are huge. That looks yeah. like really good news. But what is happening here is energy is being built up. Nothing gets a chance to correct and equalize. And the other than the Great Depression, uh, the depth of the busts is much, it's much more violent. The crashes come uh, faster, you know, other than the crash point in the Great Depression. Uh, it used to be that expansion and contraction netted out to zero. And uh, we, we um, had a fairly stable economy with a pendulum swinging back and forth like this. And now they expand and they expand and they expand and then wham, <laughs> we, we get this yeah. big contraction. <laughs> Silent. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for subscribing and mention that if you'd like to help our channel, please consider my company, GoldSilver.com, the next time you buy precious metals. We're one of the most trusted names in the industry. Our prices are sharp, delivery is fast, and we have an insider's program where you find out exactly what I'm doing with my own investments. Thanks for making GoldSilver.com your dealer. And now back to the video. They expand and they expand and then wham, we, we get this yeah. <laughs> big contraction point. violent. And what yeah. it's doing is, is building up energy to where the manipulation of the economy, you know, we've got some really bad stuff coming at us right now. We've got, uh, you know, these high jet, debt to GDPs. We're getting involved in wars all over the world. Uh, we've got, um, there's a currency crisis brewing. Uh, yeah. and, uh, I think it's just going to be horrible. Anyway, that's what I see in it. Is there something that, that you wanted to show me beyond that? Well, I, I think 
you know, there's a little bit of manipulation there in how they measure these things uh, for sure. And there's been technological advances that that might account for a lot of the more green bars on the right than on the left. Um, that's fair. But also we've introduced money printing. Um, oops, I just right. got gone. Currency printing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they're 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 creating currency out of nothing, and of course that's going to help with expansion. So I think well, that also created out of it. money, out, out of nothing. They create it out of uh, enslavement by uh, any, any treasury bond that's sold that the Federal Reserve then buys. All of that principal and interest is owed back out of future taxes. So yep. what they're doing is when when they expand the currency supply like this. Um, uh, you know, the, most of the currency supply is created by the banks. And so that is created through loans and leases. And so you are promising to pay in the future. And that creates the currency today, uh, with the currency that the government creates, uh, we are, the government creates it. Uh, the bank reserves are the vast majority of base currency. There's the currency in circulation and then bank reserves, and uh, we get stuck with the bill, the, the tax-paying yep. public. Um, yeah, so anyway. Uh, well, the other yeah, thing that I got out of this is that uh, recessions are inevitable. Even with all the manipulation that they may be doing, you can see that we always have recessions still. And yes. this, this uh, begs the question, Mike, where does one invest for a recession? How does one prepare their portfolio for a recession. And uh -huh. I think it's fair to say that a lot of um, the mainstream will say, well, you know, buy stocks, buy uh, defensive stocks, buy dividend paying stocks, whatever they might say. But Mike, this shows that the S&P is usually falls during recessions. This chart goes, measures the recessions going back to the 1960s. And you can see what the what stocks have done, they've usually fallen. Uh, and since 2000, those th three recessions, you'll see they've uh, fallen each time. One of them was over 37%. So I think just generally buying stocks and you know, holding on them through recession, you know, you're probably not going to see your portfolio rise. Um, and Mike, here's one I haven't showed before. Uh, yes, I've never is, seen this before either. Yeah. I, I measured copper because I had a, a gold copper pick on my site. And so I looked at what copper's done. And since the 1960s, in every recession, copper has fallen. And I think that's why they call it Dr. Copper, because it predicts, yeah. you know, um, how the economy is doing. It reflects how the economy is doing. I want it's to point out that it didn't just fall, but in almost all of these, it fell big time. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Many of these are double digit declines, or most of them are. So, yeah. so copper is not necessarily the way, area to go into. And then our beloved silver, you know, I looked at how silver has done during recessions. And again, I want to point out this is just during the recession, the official recessionary period. We're only measuring it during the official recession. Yeah, from oh, the silver. onset of the recession to the month that we come out of. Exactly right. And you can see a lot of times, especially, you know, since the 1990s, even though silver has fallen during the recession, when it came out, it usually rose and sometimes violently. So, yes, yeah. um, but during the recession, you know, we probably shouldn't expect silver itself to do, you know, extremely well. Uh, so I do want to point out something on the silver chart. Go back to it. Just, yep. you know, which all of the viewers know. But take a look at the height of the uh, 1980 peak. And uh, this is probably, uh, I'm, I'm not sure which data this is. It's definitely based on the close, not an intraday. Um, the intraday yes. high in 1980 was 52.50 on the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Yeah, um, this is just measuring the, closing prices. Yeah, the, yeah. the close was 50 on that exchange, it looks like you've got around 49.50 here or something like that. But what else has not exceeded its 1980 high? <laughs> Is there anything else in society? 
you know, this chart shows it. You've got the 2011 high, and before that, the 1980 high was higher. We have yet to uh, get, you know, to pierce that 1980 high of silver. I think it's just amazing. But yes, this is showing that for the um, uh, during recessions, silver is not necessarily the place to be. But then right after the recession, it might just like uh, do a slingshot move like it did coming out of COVID. Mike, look at the declines there since 2000. They're all single digits. So it's not like silver crashed and, and, and didn't recover you know, during a yeah. recession. They were mild declines. So um, that's kind of encouraging. Yeah. Uh, but where do we go? Well, <laughs> there's really only one place to go, in my opinion, and that's gold. You can see this is gold during all the recessions since the 1960s. It's risen every time but twice, and the two declines were single digits. And again, this is during the recession. The gold price is actually rising when there's an economic contraction. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I... Uh, well, I think, I think part of this is because gold tends to lead and then silver follows a little bit later. Uh, so, good point. Yeah. yeah. So gold rises and then after the recession is over, silver rises probably to a greater extent usually because it's, it's, silver is pretty much like gold but leveraged. However, right. Um, right. Good, the gains to be made, I believe, in gold are going to be big enough to where... Um, uh, you don't actually need the leverage. So, um, yeah, yeah, good, good point. Yeah, um, this is excellent, Jeff. So it's showing that your greatest protection uh, during a recession, and I believe that we're, one has already either started or will start very shortly, uh, as everybody's seen, uh, the, the viewers, if they've watched any of my previous videos, I've presented an awful lot of data that shows that you know, from the Federal Reserve that shows that a recession should be here. So. Yep. I, I mean, Mike, the last point I would make is that we, um, you know, we insure our cars, we insure our homes, we insure our lives. <laughs> um, so why not insure our portfolios? And the best insurance to have in your portfolio is gold. You mentioned before that CPM group showed Historically, that 20 to 25 percent of one's portfolio should be in gold. And that's critical this time as we head into a recession. So, I mean, I look at my portfolio and add up all the values of all the portfolios. And I have to ask myself, is 20 percent of the value of everything I own in investments at 20 percent? You know, so that that's a lot. Um, but I think that's where people need to be is 20 percent especially um, in the current climate that we're in, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a lot higher than 20%, but uh, uh, when I say precious metals, uh, when I, my gold allocation is quite small because during the time of my purchases, the gold-silver ratio has been very, silver has been extremely undervalued during that whole time. And so I usually end up buying, you know, when it's above uh, 70 or so, 65, 70, I just buy uh, silver only. And yeah. um, and so I've ended up with a lot of silver. <laughs> uh, it would be nice to have more gold, but I've got plenty. So I've, I yeah. feel well, yeah. Good. This is awesome. Very well, good. good. I'm glad you like it. And uh, hey, Mike, I just want to mention some people have asked um, uh, the book Pater that I wrote is now available in paperback. So you can order an actual physical copy of the book. That's what some people were waiting uh, for. Um, it's available on Amazon or you can uh, download the link through our site right there. Um, and I wanted to just give a shout out to Dan, our expert video guy and production manager. Uh, he's the one who actually came up with the name pay dirt. Uh, and when he okay. mentioned that name to me, before the book was even written, I'm like, oh, that's the perfect name for a book. So uh, shout out to Dan, uh, because the book is all about trying to hit pay dirt with mining stocks. So so awesome. thank you, Dan. Yeah, but you have, it, there's a quote that you wanted to show too, right? Yeah, uh, this really ends things very nicely. I, I think uh, Dan will put it up there, but it's from 
George, George Bernard Shaw. Uh, this is really pertinent for the time we're in right now, Mike, I sure think. Is. <laughs> you yeah. have to choose between trusting to the natural stability of gold and the natural stability of the honesty. <laughs> Can you say that with a straight face? Honesty well, and intelligence. the part I can't say, intelligence. <laughs> and intelligence of the members of the government. And with due respect to these gentlemen, I advise you, as long as the capitalist system lasts, to vote for gold. And, <laughs> boy, that's really there true. You, Mike. you have to trust in them, our politicians and elected leaders, or you have to trust in gold. Yeah. And I think the message is clear there. You have to trust in gold. Yes, I absolutely agree. And with that, I think we will wind things up. I want to thank you very much, Jeff, for being here. So thanks. Thanks for having me, Mike. It was great to be back with you. And to the audience, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, but this is by no means the whole story. If you want the full story, including my free online-only chapters and companion videos, there's a wealth of information at ggsr21.com. Thanks.